My name is Rhapsody, and welcome back to Slay the Spire. <sighs> We're leaping right back into the modded runs with another defect run here in Replay the Spire. So after this loop through of the characters, I've just done the Ironclad through Silent through Defect twice each. Twice each, yes. Now that I've completed the loop through the characters twice, I think I'll start installing some other mods on top of this, probably starting with the character mod. I've got my eye on the Juggernaut for the first one and maybe the Mad Scientist afterwards, but who knows? Another try? Another try. I kind of want to go with the random rare card or the random boss relic and then just build around. Look at random rare card. Multicast. All right, let's see if we can get a Dark Orb deck going on. I'm not going to take a path with the most possible elites here. Simply because there's a path with one fewer than the most that also has a bunch of question marks and a bunch of shots and, you know, all that good stuff. None of these necessarily go... Upgrades two strikes. At the very least, that's going to be handy early on. Um, I mean, I could take charge battery. I think I'm actually just gonna. Uh, you know what? I've got elites coming up. I'll remove a defend. I want to make it more likely that I draw into my dark related card earlier. Gosh, I hope I have one. Sorry for the quick stop for a second. Had to blow my nose. I am not well at the moment. Just a little bit ridiculously under the weather, unfortunately. But hey. That's okay. We've already removed the card. We could take Claw. No, we couldn't. We'll take a charge battery. It's a defensive option, though. Yeah, sadly, just a little bit under the weather at the moment. But that should clear up soon enough. In the meantime, we have some video games to play. Five and eight. Kill him. Ball lightning? I mean, I don't want to, but I'm not going to as well. I feel bad about this because I'm pinning everything on the idea that I'll get a dark orb. And if I don't, what exactly am I going to do about it? And unfortunately, multicast isn't ridiculously powerful with just the zap. <sighs> I mean, for most of our energy values at this point, multicast is just going to be a bad version of dual cast. That said, our overpowered strikes are going to help us get through this in the early. And this is one of the reasons that I took a path with fewer elites, right? Because it wasn't really going to be easy on us unless we got like an early Doom and Gloom. Doom and Gloom is kind of like one of the gold standard cards. All right, I'm going to roll the 50-50 that this saves us. Never mind. I didn't really have that many options there. I had no defense cards in hand and I couldn't kill in any other fashion. So, eh, whatever. What will be, will be. Chameleon Ring, your potions are more potent. You can now brew at rest sites. I'm pretty happy to see that, actually. I quite like that. Uh, as well as an explosive potion that is like 14. We'll check after this. Rainbow is a way to get one Dark Orb at the back of your party. It's a little underwhelming. Double Energy would be nice if I had it in the same hand as Multicast after I've upgraded it, after I've got a Dark Edge. You can see... There's so many different things that I need to do before the double energy gets into this build. That explosive potion is supposed to do more damage, right? Because of the chameleon ring? Oh, no. 
Your potions are more potent. You can now brew at rest sites. This, by base, does 10 in AoE. I wonder if it doesn't upgrade the potions that currently exist, or, or rather that currently exist, but changes them for a new set. No, it can't be that, because last time we had a strength potion in our inventory, and then we got the chameleon ring and the strength potion was upgraded, so it can't be... Hmm. Well, let's remove another card from our deck. Uh, let's get another defend out of there. Need to keep up the offense. I kind of want to brew two random potions for the upcoming fight. But at the same rate, I know that I have so many cards in my deck that still need to be upgraded. Let's get that one first, because we can't have an AoE fight coming up, because we've already fought the Sentinels, and two elite fights in a row can't be the same. Or a Calcum, if you end your turn without block, gain six block. That's extremely handy early on. Up. My goal is basically just get a large amount of lightning orbs before I wake the enemy up. I mean, hell yeah, like here. 18. I mean, I could also just hard defend that one. Sure, we'll finally use dual cast. So we've taken seven damage so far in this fight. This multicast is five by eight, 40. Okay, cool. Pretty much any hand should be able to kill here. Yep, that'll do. All right, Centennial Puzzle. The first time you lose HP each combat, draw three cards. That's actually going to be pretty handy. It'll get me to mine a little faster. Those, though, that is to say, to my Dark Orb generation, which is going to be kind of one of the largest points of our run. All right. So, four by eight is lethal. That'll do. Gosh, I'm really starting to feel like we have to abandon this Dark Orb build. As much as I want to go here and upgrade, I also want to go here and see if there's a Dark Orb generation card. Who's our boss? Ooh, that's not even a good boss for us. Okay. You know what? I am going to take the path that actively might kill this run to try and give it the best chance to be overpowered. Please be a shop. It's not a shop. Okay, there's two speed potions, but we do not have... Ooh, draw three cards and gain two energy. That's pretty good. Uh, we'll drop the explosive potion and take the two speed potions. They'll probably save us in, you know, a pinch a couple times upcoming. We need more energy generation, in, uh, energy generation, orb generation right now. I was obviously banking on some of it being dark orb right now, but we've got two ways in our deck of evoking and only one way of channeling. So we'll never be able to match it. Without, like, you know, very specifically lucky or unlucky draws. Okay. Because I came into this fight with so little health, this attack is only going to be 1 by 6, which is super easy to defend against. Uh, or I could even choose not to defend against it so that I can get an extra card. Not going to do that, though. Oh no, if I didn't defend, I would actually be fully defended by Orichalcum. Huh. Andy. Beautiful. <sighs> As you can see, most of the hits the enemy here is dealing are completely blocked by Orichalcum because I came in with low health. At the very least, the... The second attack was the one that was blocked by Orichalcum on low health because I came in with that. Uh, I'll speed potion. This is an extra 8 per X. This is 9 per X. So There goes nothing. I mean, if I could play dual cast and multicast, I would. But I can't. Because I only have one orb. 
We will actually naturally play the charge energy there just to get an extra energy next turn. I might get, you know, orb generation as well as uh, the other thing that I definitely didn't forget the name of. I'm about to take some damage here. Ow. Well, at least we got a really, really thick draw. So four by eight is not lethal. We've got eight damage incoming. We'll block for six. We'll take two. And then, oh, this sucks. It's okay. We live on exactly one HP and then we murder. Calculated. Uh, Rainbow, <laughs> god damn it. Dark Orbs, please! Uh, Vision, Rainbow, and Mirror Shield. Mirror Shield is channel 1 Crystal, which uh, boosts adjacent orbs. Channel 1 Frost, gain 5 block, gain 1 reflection. So that's good in a defense-heavy dark deck, actually, because you would play your dark to get it to the front of the line, because oftentimes you want dark in the front of the line so that you can more readily evoke it, but also you want it in the front of... Is that? That is... Oh my god, that's... That's um, that's the art for auto shields, but it also has the old art for the strike the defect laid on top, I think? Huh. Nifty trick. Uh, but you would try and get the Dark Orb to the front uh, so that you can affect it more readily by loop as well as you can more readily evoke it. And then if you can, after that, play Mirror Shield, you've got a Crystal which is increasing the effect of the Dark Orb as well as the Frost Orb behind it, giving you some block and giving you reflection so you've got some ongoing damage in the middle. That said, I can't take it yet because I still don't have my GD... I'm not taking Rainbow for it. I'm not taking Rainbow as my only way to get a Dark Orb. Uh, you know the worst thing about this? Especially since we have an Xcos card in our deck. We really need extra energy. But we will have only one card choice per area next floor. I would be relying effectively on an early shop. How risky do I want to go? Like, I could go for the Runic Pyramid. Okay. It'll help me hold my pieces to the right time as well. They'll be less effective, but... It also won't just immediately destroy me. In the worst case scenarios. So on this floor, I'm actually going to be dodging Elites. Because we do not have a cohesive game plan and we do not have a way to kill, frankly, anything. I can't play the defend because playing the defend defends is for less than the Oracalcum by not playing the defend. So why would I play the defend? And here I'm just accepting some damage. Because I know that we've got it on the flip side. All right. Uh, I'm going to take another charge battery. Okay, okay, okay. This could be huge. If it's Necronomicon, we could double up on Doom and Gloom. It's Nilri's Codex. At the end of each turn, you choose one of three random cards to shuffle into your draw pile. I mean, we have a relatively thin deck, so we can use that to define our run. I'm, I'm taking risks at this point. This, this run is just going to die of attrition if I don't take some risks to increase my power level right now. Ouch. Oh, what the? There's two events in the entire game that give you a relic that you do not have a choice to turn down. This is one of them. I'm mad. Oh, I'm so mad. You already know. Um, yeah, none of those are good in this deck. Sorry. Okay. No, 
Not those either, thank you. Forty, thirty. We are exactly one short of lethal this turn. This does 16, and then this would do 40 afterwards. So 16 and 40 is 56. Enemy has 57. But I'll less energy next turn. Whatever, I'm going to defend as best I can. <sighs> yep. There's all the new cards in my hand. All right. Sheesh. Got through that one. And... Uh, whoa! FIFO Q, that's a first in, first out Q. It's a data structure. Uh, innate gain five orb slots for two energy. That's super interesting. It's not for us, right? We want a, a small uh, orb complement for a dark build. We're putting a lot of eggs in the dark build basket, but like, can you blame us? Oh no. Remove a card from my deck, sure. I mean, I would be removing the strikes. Obviously, I removed the riot. But I would be removing the strikes in a vacuum. 21 damage incoming, so that'll do. Uh, turbo, I mean, that's going to be bad really quickly. Sorry, reboot's going to be bad really quickly. Turbo's not, because we'll use it just to give a higher cast to our... Oh, boy. There's the Doom and Gloom, but we've also got a double energy, and I know that my next hand is going to contain the multicast. So we turbo, double energy, multicast. And it'll look a lot like that. I'm... I would be tempted to take a second reinforced body, but in a deck this thin, and when we have Aura Calcum, it's going to be difficult to find opportunities to play two of them per cycle. Since we have low energy, we really need to upgrade our defensive cards because we can't play that many of them. Happy Flower, every three turns, gain an energy. Not bad, not bad. All right, now we can stop upgrading and we can start brewing at these campsites. Ugh. <laughs> Come on. I just want to... <laughs> Come on. Ugh. We have nothing in our deck that exhausts at the moment. Excellent. I'm kind of tempted to take home Memoria because I know next floor. I mean, I've got these two events up here or possible events up here. Yeah, I'm taking home Memoria. I know next floor is going to be garbage for us if we get there. Uh, okay. Gambler's Brew is not upgraded and Snack Oil is. You gain one more card. Well... I mean... I'll leave the defense in my hand because they're low cost. Oh, sure. I'll put that echo form in my deck because we're about to draw it with some confusion. Mm -hmm. Panic button. I mean, all of these are going to have randomized costs when I draw them, so I can't. There's the echo form I was kind of hoping for. Beautiful. Mm. So if I'm going to reinforce body, I only need to reinforce body for two, right? So we'll get an expensive strike out of our hand. Whew. Sorry about that. Mm-hmm. 
Now, this turn, I'll double play Charge Battery. We've got this. Don't worry. We've got this. And now this turn, I can double play Multicast. Oh, no. But double playing Multicast isn't going to work because it, it, the second play would try to evoke an orb that doesn't exist. Ah, crumbs. So this is only going to be 6x8. And 6x8 is uh, 48. That's only half of the enemy's HP. I pretty much needed to do that. To stall for a turn, but also to gain some extra energy. And now multicast will work because I need the second zap out there. Cool. There's our doom and gloom. If you're wondering why I'm not celebrating, I waited for so long that I earned that doom and gloom. It doesn't need to be upgraded. It's AoE damage is not really what it's there for. Um, I mean, it's helpful, but it's, it's not really what it's there for. I think at this point, I actually would have preferred the darkness, but, uh, but you know, I'm not going to say that too loud. The game will take offense. I'm actually tempted to rest here. As unlikely a story that usually is for me. These two play my only two defensive cards. Keep the hand. Uh, do I have zero costs worth? No, not really. Unfortunately, we still don't have like a loop or anything that will make this better. But you know, whatever. I'm also incentivized not to play Zap anymore because I want to be able to stack up my Dark Olds behind this. So I don't want to multicast right now because it would just kill you, then kill you, then deal one tick to you. Backline. And that's just a wee bit lame. But I also kind of should do that, right? Because I've got to clear these out before I start taking down the big bad. Well, I don't need to do a tick to you at all, so I only need four ticks from this, which means that I play a charge battery first. Unfortunately, if I don't play a zap right here, I won't guarantee that I draw doom and gloom next turn. You've attacked two turns in a row, so you're not going to be attacking next turn. You'll be buffing me. Debuffing. Sorry, that was. I know I buried the sound there. It was debuffing. Right, I'm going to play that, then Adrenaline Potion, and then play the Doom and Gloom. The earlier we can get that out and building, the better off we are. I'll take a Seek. Sure. I mean, in the reshuffle, it'll just be select a card from my deck. Okay, I'll Charge Battery, then I'll Seek a Charge Battery, play that. And then I just need to let space exists in my hand because the next card I am going to draw uh, the next hand I'm going to draw is going to contain the reinforced body and if the enemy attacks I just have a big old reinforced body to tell him to enjoy trying to attack me through I'll take a turbo I'm just going to accumulate some combo pieces in my hand oh wow uh, that's, that's an attack that I'm not particularly pleased to see Let's replace the pieces that we're definitely not playing right now, right? Mm -hmm. Cool. So we'll take one... No! I screwed up. We'll take one damage here. And that will create... Uh, that will pop the orb off of the front. Oh, I realized that exactly the last second. I'm mad. I'm so mad. We're probably going to eat the 
We're probably going to eat dirt off of that. I, I probably screwed us. I'm going to take a white noise just for the possibility of it salvaging. Because, good lord, we made some mistakes. Gee, Minetti, this is not good. All right. Uh, let's double up on the charge batteries. Make space in our hands. Oh, you're about to resummon as well, you son of a... Oh. Okay, so I can multicast here. After I, like, double charge battery, I can multicast and it will kill the front two and then start dealing some damage back. We just have to. Ugh. Right. Also, this turn, the enemy was going to hit me regardless and that was going to generate a lightning regardless. So I figured I'd generate a lightning of my own to at least make it almost equivalent. Okay, so that didn't end up killing us, but that was a garbage mistake that I made. Um... So my bad. My bad on that one. I don't want this because it exhausts and it'll add another card to my deck where our cycle, especially because we hold ha uh, cards in hand, if we get a garbage card from Dead Branch, it is just going to stay in our hand forever. And we don't get to do anything at that point. Uh, Coffee Dripper, gain energy at the start of each turn. You can no longer rest at rest sites. I kind of have to do that. I, I do probably at some point in this floor need to rest at a rest site, but I also need the extra energy. Otherwise, I'm not going to win. So uh, at the very least, we have another option for what we can do at campsites, right? We don't have any significant smiths left to do, but we do have the chameleon ring still. And that can be important. Okay. I've got a path that has only one elite. I feel like that's probably uh, about my speed right now. I'll take a natural darkness. Actually, you know what? This fight's this fight ramps up so quickly that we don't even really have the time to use natural darkness. We need things with a much, much, much more instantaneous effect. Like how here, I am playing my cards incorrectly. That's fine. We'll kill next turn. I thought I had one extra energy than I did. I think I thought that I'd taken an energy relic at the end of the first floor. Nope. I mean, Doom and Gloom is the most obvious play of all time. So it's got to be Doom and Gloom, Charge Battery, Zap, and then Reinforce. I don't need another Multicast. Hell, most of the time I don't even need the one that I have. Again, the goal here in the early game is just to get them all in this fight in particular, uh, to get them all near enough in terms of health values to then be able to do something like that. Uh, nope. <laughs> Would Quantum Egg be good for us? <gasps> Nilri's Codex Quantum Egg! No! We, oh, that would be awesome! Uh, damn it. All right, we'll start removing strikes from the deck. They're not the way that we deal damage. Upgrade all cards. You can no longer heal. Well, I mean, we... We can't... So we currently do have a couple ways of healing, right? Nilaris Codex can give us the self-repair. Or it can give us white noise, which gives us self-repair. Or we get regen potions. Or... Is it just that? Yes. 
I could also get 999 gold and gain two normality and be totally okay with it, but I don't know if I'm going to have a shop in the rest of the run. Because the two normality would be cancelled by Omori. Or I could just fight a boss from Act 1. I mean, this is the one that has the most guaranteed effect. And my goal here is... Whoa. My goal here is not to... Transform the enemy this turn if I can avoid it. And I can. <laughs> Creative AI. Creative AI Quantum Egg. 3000 IQ Galaxy Brain. Oh my god, we need that at some point. Not now, but at some point. Not, not now though. I can't take the Creative AI here because if I take Creative AI, I'm going to have to play every single power. And if any one of them is a storm, then that prevents me from ever building the Dark Orb to the kind of right point for it. I mean, I do just need to stall, and I can probably stall pretty early in, uh, easily in your opening phases. Okay. If you're wondering why I'm still playing things when I need to stall, it's because I need to make room in my hand for the reinforced body that I'll use to defend myself against the ongoing onslaught. See, I can't use Storm, and I can't take Storm, I can't do anything with it. Oh, we accidentally transformed the enemy. Damn. Okay. It's a double charged battery. I mean, I can also just double strike the enemy here. With no negative effect. So 36 by 8. What is 36 by 8? Well, 30 by 8 is 240. Okay, never mind. The enemy is dead. Multicast. All right. Thread and needle. That's excellent, especially considering we can't rest. Uh, at the start of each combat, gain five plated armor as well as a liquid thorns. Liquid bronze, rather, giving us four thorns. I'll be honest, I'm a little frustrated that all of our damage could not knock over the Repulsor. I'm going to allow myself to take damage this turn so that I draw Hardcore. Never mind. Oh, no way. I still will take damage this turn. Okay. Then at the very end, just a reinforced body, so I only get hit once here. I should have played the multicast at the end of that turn. Just get that lightning orb away from myself. In fact, I'll play it here. Excellent. And now I'm pretty much just waiting for my multicast to come back. There it is. Goodbye. Energy potion. Hell yes. We'll drop the snack oil for that. Double energy. Oh my god. We are going to blow up this final boss. It is going to be biblical. Steroid potion and fear potion. Neither of you are good. I probably shouldn't have brewed. I probably should have... Upgraded a relic somehow. Red mask. At the start of each combat, apply one week to all enemies. Oh, why did I go for the path with another elite in it? That was dumb. That was uh, that was not clever. Dumb thing that I just did. The general idea of what I'm going to do here is just get my dark orb out as early as I possibly can, hold double energy and my energy potions, and then just suddenly have. 40 energy on a turn and blow the enemy up. 
I'm playing those strikes again just to get them out of my hand. If I hadn't already made the Lightning Orb, I would have taken the Mirror Shield there, but I have already taken the Lightning Orb, so I can't take the Mirror Shield. Uh, okay, so... I doubled energy, I go up to 8. 8 is 9 for the multicast because it's X plus 1, so 9 by 18 is slightly short of 180. It is 160... Yeah, we've got lethal. 162. See? Ooh, data disc! Start each combat with plus one focus. That's going to be real handy for us. Uh, fish, like, recursion is a way to get the Dark Orb to the back of the party. But considering we don't have that many other orb generation things, it's fine as it is. Tori, whenever you would receive five or less unblocked attack damage, reduce it to one. I should probably be smithing my defense, actually, because all of our damage is dealt in a very specific way. I don't need to modify that. Sure. Heal 19 there, as well as not take a curse. Pantograph at the start of boss combat. Heal for 25 HP. I'm tempted to go for the elite, but I do recognize the fact that with, like, a, a double orb walker fight in particular, we could be in some trouble. So I'm, uh, I'm going to not do that rather than do that. Savvy? Hmm. Well, I mean, I can't kill anyone with those reliably, at least, this turn. So my goal was to get them all near enough in terms of low HP. Ugh. Lame. Okay, a little sap. I can't use my multicast to get rid of the lightning because then I would have to draw back into my multicast again. Um, but it's okay. Next turn, we've got the double energy multicast. And in fact, it'll be 12 energy just off the back of that. The charge energy is particularly helpful here. So I don't know if we're using like anything. <laughs> uh, we're using the chameleon ring right now. I was, I'm not trying to specifically limit my builds to only include builds that are uh, from cards that are inspired by Replay the Spire, especially because the, the glass and crystal orbs, I have a lot of difficulty using at the moment. I'm just not familiar enough with them yet. I probably shouldn't take a second Doom and Gloom. If the Seek was, you know, cheap enough to buy, then I would, but it's not, so I won't. Uh, we're going to heal up to full when we go into the boss fight. Anyhow... And we definitely know we want those two energy potions. Like, unless we get another energy potion, I don't know if there's anything I want here. So instead, I'll smith a defend. Again, just to keep us around while we build up. And I'll dual cast to get that out of my hand. See, I am tempted to start just picking every claw from that and make this a claw build. <laughs> <laughs> I told you I was doing a claw build. I mean, it's just an episode or two late. <laughs> and in the wrong series. <laughs> uh, okay. So from now on, I just need to play defensive cards as best I can. Cool. Oh, draw one fewer cards. I'm happy about that. Thank you. Because if Echo forms in there, it will double the double energy. Oh my god. We're, we're going to take some damage this turn, and that's that's just going to happen. But... <laughs> the turn after this is going to be GD Biblical. Alright. I don't... I don't... I, I could let this build for longer, but this is by far enough. I'm not even going to calculate it. You know what? I'm not even going to calculate it. I'm going to get to a total of 10 energy, and then I'll double that, and then I'll double that, 
and then I'll multicast 41 times 34 damage. Awesome. It was just enough to kill, apparently. <laughs> oh, man. I feel really good to have done a dark build. I, I really like that. We keep unlocking Ascension Mode 2. We've done it. We've done all of the Ascensions with the defect. I did them. I don't want to do them again. <laughs> I had a lot of difficulty with the with the sum of them. I, 14. 14, I think I had the most difficulty with. But 12, I think, was also a little bit of a bastard as well to us. So, for the moment, my name has been Rhapsody. The name of the game has been Let's Play, uh, Let's Play Slay the Spire Modded. And if you're wondering, by the way, I do want to always just always occasionally address this in the series. The reason it's not called Let's Slay the Spire is because you have to make concessions for search engine optimization. So if people type, uh, type Let's Play Slay the Spire, I'm trying to be found on that search. Whereas if you search Let's Slay the Spire, I already have all of those words in the title as well. But also it's more unlikely for someone to go, ooh, let's look for a Let's Play of this game with a particularly clever title. So that's the unfortunate reason that it's like let's play Slay the Spire modded rather than let's slay the Spire modded or let's mod Slay the Spire. Savvy? Anyhow, for the moment, my name has been Rhapsody. The name of the game has been Slay the Spire. Uh, and we are probably going to start with some modded characters in the next episode. So see you then.